hello guys welcome to today's class in today's tutorial I'm going to teach you multi-threading concept in Java so in this tutorial I'm going to teach you Java multi-threading in detail with a lot of example program so I recommend you to watch this video till the end for the better understanding of multi-threading in Java first thing first what is multi-threading Multi-threading refers to a process of executing two or more threads simultaneously for the maximum utilization of CPU. In operating system, I'm sure that we know, we, if you want to run a process, it has to be resides on the main memory. So in order to run more than one process simultaneously, we use the concept of multi-threading here a thread is a lightweight sub process or the smallest unit of processing so before we learn more about multi-threading and how to create the thread let us learn the life cycle method of a thread life cycle of a thread in java is basically state transition of a thread that starts from its birth and ends on its death so basically this life cycle method have five stages first one is a new or newborn state second one is a runnable third one is a running state fourth one is the blocked state and fifth one is a dead state as you can see them here in this example diagram that depicts the basic life cycle methods of a thread let me explain each of these states in detail so that you will understand what is this stage new in the process of creating a thread new or newborn state when we create a thread object using a thread class thread is born and it is known as to be a newborn state that is when a thread is born it enters into a new state but the start method has not been coded yet on that particular instance. In case if you don't understand how to create the object for the thread class and what does that mean the start method, don't worry. I'm going to give you an example program. By then you will understand what is that start method, how to start the thread. So basically this is the diagram that explains a newborn state in thread. So here is the newborn state here this thread will not enter into the runnable state unless i call the start method if i call this particular thread with a start method then it will enter into the runnable state so what is runnable state i will explain you in the next slide so in case if i don't call this thread class with a start method i can call this thread class with a stop method what does that mean if i stop that particular thread it will go straight into the dead state so basically dead state is nothing but the thread after the execution thread means a sub process the second state is a runnable state so what is runnable state runnable state means a thread is ready for the execution for that when the start method is called on a new thread then thread will enter into the runnable state so Initially, the thread is created. We call that one as a newborn thread. Then from there, we are going to use the start method so that that particular newly created thread will enter into the running thread or runnable state. So for example, it's not, it's, it's not necessarily it's going to be the running state. Uh, when you call the start method, actually it will reach the runnable state. Runnable state is the state before the running state. For example, let's say I have created three threads and then I have called those three threads basically those three threads who reach the runnable state as you can see them here in this diagram there are three threads have called with the start method now they have queued up in the runnable state before it enters into the running state then what is running state running means here here you can see running means a processor has allocated the time slot to the thread for its execution 
when the thread scheduler selects a thread from a runnable state for execution, it goes into the running state. Look at this figure. In running state, processor gives its time to the thread for execution and executes its run method. So this is the state where thread performs its actual functions. A thread can come into running state only from the runnable state as I say. A running thread may give up its control in any one of the following situation and it can enter into the blocked state. So let us just quickly look into this diagram. When this sleep method is invoked, a thread to sleep for a specified time period. The thread is out of the queue during this period of time. Then the thread again re-enters into the runnable state as soon as, as this time period is elapsed. So for example, there is a thread that reaches to the runnable state then from here it reaches the running state. For some reasons that thread is not executed within the given time slot. So in that case that process will take the sleep mode. So what does that mean? For a certain amount of time that particular thread will be in sleeping mode. Then after that time elapses it will again enter into the runnable state. It won't straight go to the running state. Instead, it will come and queue up in the runnable state. After that, time has elapsed from that sleep method. So, for example, when a thread is suspended using the suspend method, as you can see them here, there is a method name called suspend. Let's say the thread has suspended using the suspend method for some time in order to satisfy some particular condition. Basically, a suspended thread can be revived by using resume method. As you can see them here, maybe this uh, particular thread has been suspended for some reasons. But again, if you want to revive this thread that has been suspended using this suspend method, a resume method can be used in order to revive the suspended method. In that case, again, instead of going straight into the running thread, it will reach the runnable state. It won't go straight into the running thread. Instead, it will come and queue up in the runnable state until that time comes for that particular thread. Then, when the wait method is called on a thread to wait for some time. So, apart from this sleep method and then suspend method, there is a method name called wait. What is that wait? When the wait method is called on a thread, to wait for some time, the thread in wait state can be run again using notify or notify all method. For this notify and notify all method together with the wait method, how does that thread work? We will see them in an example program so that you will understand how the wait method work on the thread and how to work with the notify and notify all method. Then the fourth method here is a, as you can see them here, a block state. So what is block state? A thread is considered to be in the block state when it is suspended or sleeping or waiting for some time in order to satisfy some condition. So when you say a thread is in this block state, maybe it can be there for the following reasons. Maybe the thread has gone for the sleep mode or the thread has been suspended or maybe the thread is in the wait. So these are all the instances where a thread can go into the block state. Finally, dead state. As you can see them here, dead state. This is a fifth level of life cycle method of a thread. So what is dead state? A thread dies or moves into the dead state automatically when its run method completes the execution of statement. When the thread has executed, let's say here when you reach this level, the thread has already executed. In that case, it will reach the dead state, isn't it so? So that is, a thread is terminated or dead when the thread comes out of the run method. A thread can also be dead when the stop method is called in some cases. That's the reason why a thread can also be called dead when the stop method has been called. It can be called from the new state. Instead of, uh, instead of calling the new thread from a start method, if you call uh, the new thread with the stop method, it can 
directly it can reach the dead state or from the block state if you call the stop method it can still reach the dead state so basically a thread dies or moves into the dead state automatically when its run method completes the execution of the statement uh, this is basically the life cycle method of a thread so finally i would say during the life cycle of thread in java a thread moves from one state to another state in a variety of ways as i say that it can use the start method or we can use the sleep method suspend method wait method yield method resume method notify method because of these different methods it can reach different states this is because in multi-threading environment when the multiple threads are executing only one thread can use cpu at a time this is very important point here as i say when multiple threads are executing only one thread can use cpu at a time all other threads live in some other states either waiting for the turn on cpu or waiting for satisfying some specific conditions therefore a thread is always in any of these five states at the end of the day so this is basically a life cycle methods of a thread i hope now you have understood what is thread and what is multi-threading and the different life cycle method of a multi-threading in java